Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? This podcast is sponsored by RSE Management Consulting, Inc. Richard has been my accountant for five years and our relationship has grown into an incredible friendship. He now serves over 60 members in my business. The firm specializes in corporate tax, financial bookkeeping, and management advisory services for small and medium-sized businesses. His expertise is helping his clients manage the intricacies of tax law and teaching small and medium-sized businesses how to navigate the tough landscape of tax. If you want to hear more, you can go and listen to episode 203. I interviewed Richard on my podcast. The value that he has given to me over the last five years to me is truly priceless. He will work with you to create an action plan in order to organize your business finances, which in turn affects your personally. He will work with you to create an action plan in order to organize your business finances, which in turn affects you personally in so many amazing ways that you didn't even know. You can email him at reidelberg, R-E-I-T-E-L-B-E-R-G at R-S-E-M-G-T-C-O-N dot com, or you can call him directly at his office, area code 631-623-2400. You can also visit R-S-E-M-G-T-C-O-N dot com to contact and learn more, and we will upload all this information to the show notes as well. Hello, my Level Up family. You guys, I am so excited. I say that every week, but I'm like really, really excited to be here with you guys. I have a guest on today and you are in for a real treat. So I have, her name is Alexandra Sove, and she is going to tell a little bit of her story, but we are going to have so much fun today talking energy, talking vibration, talking mindset. So this is a woman that I do do business with and I do life with. And you know, as when my entrepreneur journey started 17 years ago, I did not know who this woman was, but I am such a big believer in who we become as we elevate the energy we give off, the mindset we have, the vision we have eventually connects us to the people that we are meant to do life with. And so often when people start their journey, no matter what that is, they look around, they look around at their current surroundings and they think that's their life. But your current reality does not necessarily mean that's your future reality, but it's about expanding to your next self. And as uncomfortable as it is to expand to your next self, when you expand to that next self, you your vibration and your energy attracts the people that are meant to be in your life. So I am not only so proud of this woman, I love her, but her energy, when I think of Alexandra, I call her Alex, I'm going to go with Alex, okay? Because when I think of her, I think of energy, I think of light, I think of positivity, and when I'm in her presence, she inspires me to be more. And my friends, that's who you want to surround yourself with. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to talk energy. We're going to talk frequency level. We're going to talk vibration. We're going to talk about how that kind of stuff really matters. But I do want to turn this over to you, Alex, to share a little bit about yourself with our Level Up, level up listeners today. Oh my God. I feel so blessed to be on here. And as you were talking, Deb, I was feeling like this surreal moment of thinking to myself, how blessed am I to be around somebody like you in my life? And when we talk about energy and when we talk about elevating our life to the next level, I'm always flabbergasted that I'm actually living this reality when I look back at where I came from, because I don't come from a 1% family. I come from a very, very average family that is very loving 
very, very loving. Hometown, small town, 40,000 people. People don't really dream big in my little hometown in Cornwall, Ontario. And so as I grew into my journey and I learned to become an entrepreneur, I remember looking and admiring people like you from afar and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like they vibrate at such a level. They live this life and they get to offer their kids all these possibilities. They get to go on these trips. And that was definitely not my reality when I stepped into my entrepreneurial journey and I started to dream bigger. And that's really where I see that the biggest misconception is that people are lucky, first of all, when they achieve big success, because it all starts with a big dream. And so I really started to emphasize on dreaming. And I think that we're going to really extend this conversation today into what vision boards and what dream boards look like, because my whole life pivoted. I went to, um, what's it called? A millionaire mindset conference with Harv Ecker. If you guys are not familiar with that, it literally pivoted my whole entire existence to a whole different level. I went to that conference. It was a free conference, by the way, because I was not into spending money for these kinds of things because I was deep in my knees and deep into debt. I was definitely always this terrible money mindset. So if that can, if you can identify yourself to a terrible money mindset and you're here, you're at the right place because what I hope is that when you get off this episode, that you pivoted that and you know that you can take charge of your life in a whole different level. And so I went to that conference and it was basically a whole day and they talked about vision boards. And it wasn't the first time I had ever heard of that, but it was the first time that it actually hit my heart in a different way. And it was, they were talking about mind movies and how it can pivot your life. And so often enough, I hear people say, oh, I made a mind movie or I made a vision board and it didn't work, (laughs) right? Well, I'm so proud to say that in 2011, I made a vision movie. And I didn't just make it to make it. I didn't just make a vision board to make the vision board. I actually decided what my life was going to be like. And that that really pivoted my whole entire existence. I literally started to draw out like, let's forget where I come from for a minute. What do I want in my life? What do I want to become? Where do I want to live? What kind of friends do I want to have? And that's why you embodied that, Debbie. And I'm like, you're my friend. You're my, we do life together. We're elevating to the next level. And this is what's so exciting is that we truly become what we, what we expect out of our life. And so I wrote out what kind of relationship I wanted to have. I was single at the time. I even wrote down that I wanted two daughters. I wrote down that I wanted to have a global business. I wrote down that I wanted to have a certain car at the time. I wanted to achieve a certain amount of income. I wanted to be out of debt, but I didn't talk about debt. I talked about financial freedom. And financial freedom is really different for everybody, right? So I wrote all those things down. And I specifically mentioned that I wanted my life to have a specific meaning. And I watched it every day, morning and night every single morning and night for like about a year. And then I forgot about it. Totally forgot about it. But I know that in the instance that I made that video and that I watched it every day, I would embody it. It was a decision. This is what my life is going to be. And so I took a step forward. And one day somebody sent me this video. They found it randomly on YouTube. And they said, I think this is yours. And Deb, I watched that video And I get goosebumps thinking about where I come from because I look at before pictures before I did that video and now today, and it's not even the same human being. And so sometimes we think to ourselves, oh, wow, they embody so much energy. They embody so many things. It's because I I fell in love with what my future was going to be like versus what my present circumstances were or what my past was, because those things don't determine anything. It's where you're deciding to go. And that's why every time I get reaffirmed when we talk about vision or I watch that vision board again. It just reaffirms that we can literally dictate what our life is going to be like if we embody the energy of where we want to head. And so long story short, I built a multi-million dollar business. I have two beautiful daughters. I'm stepmom to three boys. You know, I often laugh because I always say like, my husband is not at all what I expected physically, but he's exactly what I expected like in a relationship, I, I, the feeling. And so often enough, when people actually manifest what they want in their life, they, they say, well, it's not exactly as it used to be. But the reality is, is we attract the feeling that we put down. And so everything comes down to a feeling. So you got, and when you're doing the vision board, if anybody's listening to this and like thinking about doing their vision board, 10 years forward, 12 years later, here we are now creating new visions for ourselves. And that's really one of my things that I love doing alongside with you is really pouring belief into people. 
And, 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 and let's expand on the feelings for a little bit, because this is one of the missing pieces. And just like you said, people say, I made a vision board. I made a vision board. Or, you know, the same thing with I'm so passionate about affirmations and journaling and words. But words, although powerful, are powerless if they're not backed with that action, with the, with, with the, with the, the feeling, because the feeling is what propels you to action, right? So if you would, for example, um, Alex just said, I have a multi-million dollar business. If you say that, like, and I know when I started my entrepreneur journey, I was saying that, but I have to be really honest. And that you guys have heard me say this probably the first hundred times it came out of my mouth. I didn't believe me. It felt inauthentic. I felt like an imposter. And so it's so often, you know, whether it's I want abundance or I'm looking, I want love. And, and then you'd be like, mm, but here I am. You, 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 you have these limiting beliefs. You have these limiting thoughts. And then people think, well, I said the words, it didn't happen. But I had to keep saying those words till one day I woke up and I was like, oh, I, I believe it. I believe it. I, this is what I'm going to earn. This is what I'm going to become. And then what happened is there was a difference in my walk. There was a difference in my talk. I took bold action. I had courage because I knew to the core of my being that on the other end of that was exactly the feeling. I was working towards the feeling. So if you're one of those people making a dream board or saying the words, it's not, that's just going through the motions. You need to back that motion with that feelings. And so, you know, when we talk about feelings, Alex, because people could see you like I've seen the transformation. I've had the pleasure of seeing the transformation. And one of the things I've admired about you all of these years is Alex was, I don't want to use the word strategic, but she was very deliberate. She, even our relationship and, and relationships are two way streets, but she made it a point to earn everything, to be everywhere, to, she really did the front end of our relationship. And now I'd like to think it's 50, 50, but really did the front end. And as you were growing in this journey, you had limiting beliefs. It's not like, Oh, there's Alex. And she's just amazing. Like, you know, so I guess just really talk about the limiting beliefs because the limiting beliefs are something that we all have. You guys, I still have some Alex still, we always have them. And that's why it's like, personal growth and discovery and doing the work and over, like we are such a work in progress. It doesn't happen overnight, but all of a sudden you're going to look back one day, just like Alex did over 12 years and be like, it seems like it was overnight, but it wasn't right. So I guess my question, or even to touch about it, is like limiting beliefs and how we break through them. Right. Because you were just talking about the affirmations, the incantation. And I like to call it incantations because a lot of the times, like I've done affirmations, like the same way you're saying, like, I am a perfect example of perfect rating health. And like, here I am, like stuffing a donut in my mouth and like not being congruent with my actual affirmation and not embodying the version that I'm saying. And so a lot of the times it's all about auto suggesting ourselves and saying it, breathing it into our bodies in our subconscious, right? Because everything is subconscious. We've been programmed to believe certain things. And so what the more that even we're talking about limiting beliefs, the limiting beliefs, you're never going to live a life without no limiting beliefs. Like, oh my God, I got none of them. Like there's always another layer of that onion. But with the way that I see it is specifically when you're thinking about that limiting belief, it's because of the old programming. So one of the key points is really the fact that the forgiveness meditations and the forgiveness practices have been unbelievable in my journey. I had to learn to let go of what I believed about myself. I had to learn to forgive parts of myself that I didn't think were awesome. Okay. And then we all have this part of us that we're like, I'm not worthy. And I see it every day, coaching women every single day, seeing that they actually lack the worthiness. They have all the potential in the world, but they don't have the worthiness because somewhere along the lines, they program their nervous system to believe that they're worth or earning only $50,000 a year or to earn a certain amount. And I'm just throwing numbers out there, but it's just really, we have a certain level of success and happiness and joy that we've conditioned our nervous systems to adapt to it. So one of the key things with has been really sitting still, which if you would have told me this six years ago, Deb, 
like <laughs> just start meditating and we're like, or you're going to talk about to people to sit still and meditate. Like I'm an energizer bunny. I have a hard time slowing down my mind. But one thing that has been key in, in the transformation has been to tell my mind, you're going to sit down now and you're going to listen and you're going to sit in your greatness. You're going to sit in it and you're going to let go of the things that don't serve you anymore. So that way you can reprogram those little subconscious things. So those have been really big shifts that happened to me to realize that the limiting beliefs are only the ones that I'm actually accepting. So the more that I condition myself, the more that I realize when a voice comes in and says, oh my God, you're not going to earn that or you're going to go to this. I, I have to recondition, say, stop myself and say, where is this coming from? Is this coming from the old version of Alex or is this a version my highest version. I always talk about like how we have a higher, a big version of ourselves or a small version of ourselves. And it's making a conscious decision that I'm not going to play small anymore. I'm not going to play in that small version of myself. I'm going to play in that higher version of myself. And that that's key in letting go of those things that are really stopping us from progressing because we're all made for greatness, right? Like I think we think other people are awesome. I read a quote today. It was like, you, we have everything that like Oprah Winfrey has or like all these professional people like Michael Jordan and we admire them. We think they're amazing. Well, we all have the same thing inside of us. It's just that we don't, we have to uncover that worthiness. And even when you think of Michael Jordan, right, there's like that famous quote of how many times he missed the basket, right? And that's the thing. Here's what I love so much about being an entrepreneur is that you get to rise through your limiting beliefs. And just like you said, I believe everybody was born to have a successful, prosperous, abundant life. But we are only going to grow to the level that we feel we deserve. We are our own lid. We are our greatest solution. We are our biggest problem. And that's, I, I'm, that's why I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. Because when Alex and I are having a phone conversation, some, it's like we both could sometimes have two simultaneous conversations going on. We're both so excited and we always hang up the phone better, right? No matter what is going on, we we end up better. So here's, here's where I want to shift us a little bit because I know we're both really passionate about this. I want to talk about energy because one of the things that I've heard, you know, in my 17 years of, of coaching and building and being an entrepreneur is maybe, maybe I can't have your energy or I'm just not that energetic. I First of all, I believe that's a story that people are telling themselves. You don't need my energy. You don't need Alex's energy. But energy, your energy is everything. It enters the room before you do. It leaves the room before you do. It's your signature. It's your stamp. It's your vibration. It's what people are joining you. And, you know, when somebody walks in, even when you say, how are you? Somebody's answer is like either like oh you know like I'm so sorry I asked that yeah, person not who are bad. they like you my know? worst the, my worst reply to that when I hear people say not bad like what not bad could be better <laughs> like what is no, wrong with at you? that point that's when I want to shave my eyebrows I, want to <laughs> I don't want to shave my eyebrows at, or slap them in the forehead because you're breathing. You're limitless. But when we have that type of mindset and we, and look, we've been taught this, like, how are you? I'm amazing. I'm thriving. I'm because you want it. Even if that's not the way you're feeling at the moment, right? You become what you think about. You become what you put out there. So I just want to talk about the, the importance of energy and our frequency level. And I know that I've done episodes on this, but like our frequency and our energy, how that transcends and how it is. People, you could tell me anything you want. That and success go hand in hand. If you're going to be low vibe, low energy, low on the vibration pole of feeling anger or guilt or all of these things, it's going to show up in your results. And you are going to continue to hit roadblock after roadblock after roadblock because your energy is sucking the life out of the people around you. <laughs> the life. So back on that, my, one of my favorite quotes on that is change your energy, change your life. Because people say to me, well, we, oh, whatever we were just saying, yo, I don't have that energy. Well, the reality is, is you get to choose. You're choosing every single day what energy you're putting out there. And you get to choose. You get to choose to bring the baggage from the past into today. You get to choose whether you're going to take the, whether you're going to pull the inspiration into you because vision pulls you closer. And that's what really elevates an energy, right? When you feel like your future is so prosperous, it's abundant, it's big, it's loving. Like love is one of the highest frequencies. One of our favorite books is actually Rhonda Burns' uh, Power. 
in the power. And she has a, a level of emotional scale. I don't know all of them, but all I know is that when I looked at it, those two things spoke to me. It was like, love is the highest frequency, guilt, shame, fear is low. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shift to think about what is, what am I most grateful for on a day-to-day basis? Because gratitude opens the gate to opening up that elevated energy on a day-to-day basis. And gratitude, what it tells your subconscious is literally, thank you for what I have, but I'm also anticipating to receive something. And so when you're in the anticipation of receiving something, how overjoyed are you? Like whether that's small or big, it's continuously elevating your energy. And like you said, when you walk into a room, how do you feel? I'll be honest. Like I, people assume that I'm an extrovert. I love, I love building what I'm building. I love being in business. I love expanding to the next level, but I'm very much somebody that is is very like at home. I'm a homebody. I'm a total homebody. It's so funny because you know you're Tito, total public personality. We have and Silky and you and me <laughs> with our golden doodles, and we're perfectly happy in our comfy clothes having tea together. Please, all the golden doodle moms, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing you could thank me for that one. It's a whole other subject, but all that to say is that I'm not necessarily all that extroverted, like like to be extroverted 100 percent of my time. But my vision, my impact, my mission to leave people better than I found them actually elevates my energy. So when I know I'm going to be in a space where in a room meeting new people, I take a moment to pause and I think to myself, how am I showing up in that room? How am I elevating that frequency in that room? And I'm going to show up as open as I can and as open to everything, but attached to nothing. And the more that we're open to everything and attached to nothing, the more it elevates our frequency. When we're attached to certain ideas, it draws down our energy. It sucks us dry. So the more that I'm open, receptive, curious, wanting to learn, it continues to expand. And you know what that does? It brings people in my world because they can feel that receptivity through me. They, they want to know, they want to be sharing their stories because they can feel that I'm open and receptive. And so that's all just small practices that you can do on a day-to-day basis. So just practicing, going to have a conversation with somebody and ask as many questions as possible and feel yourself as they're explaining their stories or they're sharing things about their life. Think about all the awesome things about them and think about how you love learning about them. Maybe you don't agree with everything that, that's coming out of their mouth, but just think about how awesome they are. And that energy will transpire. And the more you do that, you will truly be leaving people better than you found them. And that's really at the end of the day, like we don't leave with a U-Haul like truck. You know, we often say you don't leave with the stuff that you buy, but you leave with the experiences and you leave with the way that you, you see people. And, you know, when you think to yourself, I want to leave a 10 on everybody's forehead, everybody that I meet, I want to put a 10 on their forehead. That will literally lift the whole frequency and the collective energy. And we all have a mission and a, um, a purpose in this whole collective energy that we share to uh, continuously elevate people's energy by doing that, right? And that, so I take my responsibility actually very seriously. Like I never would answer, how you doing? Not bad. <laughs> like I would never do that because it doesn't elevate the frequency to the next level. And I always ask, I'd like to ask somebody, what's going, what, what happened that today? What happened today that you man, what brought, like what magic did you bring into your world today? Like my neighbors know that about me. I'm like, well, oh, what magic did it happen to you today? And they actually want to come and share the good stuff about what's happening in their life. So create an environment where people want to share the good stuff because you're asking in a really positive environment. So, and that's one of the greatest things about Alex, you do leave people better than you found them. And I have to say, if you're a parent out there, our greatest teachers, a lot of times are our kids. They're our kids. And my children have been around a lot of people in the last 17 years. There's a lot of blessings when you have a parent that's an entrepreneur with a big organization and they get to see a lot. And I have to say, I'm talking about you specifically because you're on here. My kids find joy being around you. They, they feel better when they're in everything about you. They, they speak and kids are truth tellers, right? Very much very much truth teller. So I really want to thank you for that because you, you do leave people much better than you found them. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, because here's something that people don't really want to address, and it really comes up in probably every single one of my podcasts, who you surround yourself with matters. So just like you said, if somebody were to say to me, how are you doing today? Even if I'm having 
And let's say, what's a really bad day? But you don't wake up every day. I don't wake up every single day feeling amazing, but I find something. Oh, come on, you do. You do. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But you know what? Like you find something to be great. I immediately shift my focus to gratitude and praise. And who can I, who can I love on? Because what do I love? And I love so many things about my life that that kind of drowns out whatever it is that's on my mind and on my heart. Because we're human. You're never going to have. And and then when we talk about this book, like you just said, The Power by Rhonda Byrne, she even says that you're never going to be happy all the time. But if 51% of you, you're going to outweigh the other 49%, right? That possibly has fears and and doubts and insecurities. And as you grow, all of those things show up. But when I do respond to people, it's not only the energy I'm giving off, but I'm radiating my energy. It's like, it's like energy going from one person to the next. And when I do that, whether it's around somebody that I work with, somebody that I do life with, I, that, to me, that's selfish. It's not leadership because like, what do you want? Oh, what's going on? How are you? Like, and then all of a sudden it's like a sob story, right? So really what I wanted to talk about for a moment is who you surround yourself with matters. And I know you, I myself too, I am very selective and protective with who I spend my time with. And that could sound snobby. It could sound arrogant. It's not. But my inner circle of people that I trust with my heart and my soul, that they vibe all of them with amazing energy. So how do you how do you how do you feel about that? You know I, how I important love, this is. I love this question because it's all intertwined in leadership. And my husband and I, like P is like the same way. Every single beginning of the year, we kind of sit down and we assess what our goals are. We're both we have both have very big ambitions. And so what the thing is is that we take a look at who am I spending five minutes with? Who am I spending a weekend with? Who am I doing my life with? And evaluating who's the who's draining. I I understand that I have a I have a significant reason to be in a certain person's life for certain seasons in their life. And so I'm not going to be like cutting people off that are draining out my energy, but I'm going to be really mindful about what I'm doing before I'm hanging out with those people or what I'm doing after, just so that way it doesn't unbalance me. Because in terms of a leader that needs to pour into other people in terms of my energy, first of all, my family is the first element of leadership in my home. So being really mindful of where I'm putting my energy at. And so who am I hanging out with? What do they think about? What kind of income do they earn? Where are they heading? What are their ambitions? Are they stagnant or are they really in the mode to expand or in the mode to, to serve? Are they just thinking like individual thought, thought thinking, like thinking person? Or are they somebody that's really thinking about what, what is my contribution doing to not only my local community, but also global community? What is How is that impacting other people? And I really want to be more and more around those types of people. And I will tell you, this has been by far my top tip. Because when I first became an entrepreneur, I realized that the majority of my friends were watching Netflix and watching TV that were serving them absolutely no knowledge. And for a little bit, I didn't really have inspirational friends around me. Like when we start to make that decision about being really mindful of who you're going to hang out with, you might not find people that are super inspirational in like your corner, but that starts with what you're feeding yourself every day. And that's where this podcast comes in. That's where I started to listen to some Jim Rohn, listening to some Tony Robbins. So I would consider Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, the audio, the audio uh, when I was listening to you on the car, like recordings of her t- team calls and stuff. I was thinking to myself, that is really what I'm pouring into. So I might take a little pause from hanging out with people who are absolutely not driving my vision to the next level. And I'm going to start pouring into myself so that I can pour into other people in the long run. And so that energy really, really is important. And so some people think that it's scary to let go of some friendships and it's not cutting friendships out. It's just being really mindful of the influence that you want to have in the future and how what you're surrounding yourself right now. How is it serving your future self and the future people that are going to be around you and following your lead? And you know, one of the reasons why it's scary, okay, it's whether it's a new business, new relationships, new friendships, it's because that's your comfort zone. And we focus so many, so often people focus on lack. So they may be like, well, well, these are my five best friends. And what if I don't spend my time with these five best friends? What you're saying is, do you, I mean, our circles should continuously change because we are continuously changing. So people are either going to grow with you or you're going to grow you're going to grow apart, but it is impossible to continue to elevate. In fact, you know, you, you show me the five people you hang around with. They're either making 20% more than you or 20% less than you. And you're, you're generally the median. So 
if, if where you are is enough, okay, enjoy it. But most of us want more. I want to expand. Like I'm so grateful for where I am. I'm so grateful for every dime that I earn, but I believe that's going to be daily. I believe my yearly income will be daily in the not too distant future. But I know that involves me to be with people that are constantly evolving and challenging me to grow, to think, to to call me out on my nonsense, to that's the only way. So I want you guys, if this is you, to, to realize if you keep holding on to what is, you're not going to make room for what's meant to be. It's impossible to expand and shrink at the same time. So kind of view it as like a butterfly when they're in that cocoon and they're emerging to that next level. There's actually an actual number, but I think it's like millions of, you guys can't see me. This is not a visual, but I'm, I'm sitting in my podcast office, flapping my wings like, like, like a schmuck. Okay. But it's like, you have to flap and it's over and over and over and over and over and over again until you emerge to that, to that, to that next level. So I could talk to you forever, Alex. I really do talk to you forever. It's like you're on here as a guest, but like, I talk to you every single day. I'm like, and, it off. I'm like, how was it an hour and 45 minutes of that? <laughs> you know, we, we, in fact, you guys don't know this story, but I, well, you know that I have a second home in Florida. Alex now has her main home in Florida. They're about 20 minutes from each other. And honestly, that was all like, it was m- manifested. It was literally manifested like, and here we are. And now, and now, and now I'm going to see you in a couple of days. So one of the, one of the things I just want to touch on before we end is like your mindset, how your, our mindset and our energy create our future. Okay. So like any thoughts on this, because we've heard this, whether you think you can, whether you think you can't, you're right. Okay. If you're going to tell yourself, I'm just not high energy, I'm low key. And just like Alex, people who don't know me personally, maybe they've seen me on stage or they've heard me on a podcast or they've heard me train. They really think I'm this gigantic extrovert because my energy is like so on. But the good thing about that is I'm going to give you 150%. But then when I'm like, oh, I need a cup of tea. I just want to chill. I want to be in my cozy sweatpants. But your energy and your mindset is absolutely it's it's everything. And it's not just creating your current reality, but it's creating your future. And so I want Alex to add her her two cents on this. But here's what I want you guys to get excited about. Your future could be any single thing you want. If you notice what I said, your mindset and your energy. I didn't say the people who surround you, their mindset. I didn't say the way you were brought up, that energy. Your mindset your energy creates your future. Like that's pretty powerful because we are the most powerful transmission tower in the world. And you have the ability to give off and draw to you any single thing you desire. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And you know, back to mindset is really all about deciding. What do you want? What do you want? Because I think most people don't actually sit and think about what they want. They think about what could they get? Or what, what they could don't want. happen. What yeah. they don't want. What they don't want. Yeah, they specifically think about what they don't want. And the reality is this hurts every time I hear it. <laughs> because I'm like, especially back back in the time, I was like, when I would hear this every single time, I was saying, your reality is based on what you've been thinking. What you've been thinking has created your current reality. So if your current reality is awesome, that means that you've been feeding more like Debbie was just saying, that 51% on that other side. If your current reality is flipping that side, well, it's actually because you've been feeding it a whole lot more of those mindset attacks that are not so positive in your mindset. So that's really the simplicity of it. And it's taking time every single day to put paper, like pen and paper, and what throwing in the gratitude, because gratitude will elevate your energy. And then start to write out, what am I creating in the next 30, 60, 90 days? How am I finishing this year? If I wake up in a year from now, what does my life look like? And when I did that in 22, like I've done that several times, but the very first time that I ever did that, I'm waking up in 60 days. What does my life look like? Deb, it was the first time I actually tested the law of attraction. I can't even tell you how I felt. I felt like superwoman. I felt like I hacked into energy and I understood it that we can really dictate what our future is going to look like and we can draw in all the right people, places, circumstances if we pour our minds into what we're creating on a day and day basis, every single day, writing it down. So that's what I would really recommend people is really, first of all, defi- define what you want. 
define what you want and make it a decision. Like it's not one of these things like I could, I hope, or this, if this is what it's going to be. It might take a little bit more time than you decide it, but in reality, it, it, it will happen. If you decide it will happen, it will absolutely happen. So here's another question I just thought of, because here's another thing. There's a lot of people listening that have a desire to elevate their leadership, to build a business, to build a team. And not only is our energy, my friends, so important for us, but your energy as you know, I say a coach because whether any type of leadership is a coaching role, right? You're, you're inspiring people to be more, to level up, to expand, to be their best, to win, to, to, to win in the success arena. And so imagine having a coach, right? And I'm not the biggest sports fan. I, I use the sports analogy all the time because I love sports and leadership. It's really like coaching. It's intertwined. I love watching my kids play sports, but that's probably the extent of it. But really think about going onto a winning team. Do you think the coach is like, Hey guys, you know, if it's meant to be, if it, or you know what, you take that field. If you need me, I'm right here. I'm here. If you, I mean, what do you (laughs) know? Like I could do a stand up comedy act. And then people like, I'm wondering why there's like, people quitting my business or they're not staying because you're boring, you're not moving, your energy is resembling a little bit of like a, a wet rag. Like, so when we think about leadership, this is huge in growing yes. your leadership. A hundred percent. And I, I'm more and more, my life progresses, the more that I live by biblical principles and in the Bible it's written, but the, where there is no vision, the people perish. And that reaffirms, I've been a leader, like you just said, I've been that leader in seasons in my business of, oh, it's all good. Like, meanwhile, my business is crumbling down and I'm wondering why. And then the times that I actually have as a leader have personal goals for myself. Well, all of a sudden the people around me are ignited with their own personal goals. And as I grow a team goal and a vision goal, a business goal, a corporation goal, well, all of a sudden things start moving and rolling. And I think about the contribution that I'm doing towards my company. And so the thing is, is that what we do on a day-to-day basis and the contribution that we have towards whatever job we're having, whether somebody's working in corporate, whether they're working for a company or whatnot, the value that you add to that company is the value that they're going to pay you. Maybe that value is not going to come in your pocket tomorrow, okay? But I can guarantee, okay, that I've seen it. It's over and over. I actually read the guy from Coca-Cola in like the 1980s was the first person to earn almost like $880 million. It was like a crazy number. I Don't even quote me on it, but it was a crazy number. And then I thought about why would that person be earning as a salary a huge amount of income like that? And the main reason is that company didn't care to pay that that employee on nearly a billion dollars because they made several billions of dollars thanks to that guy's genius, thanks to that guy's presence, thanks to that guy's leadership. So it's the same thing in our business. If we want to have a big life, it's going to require big leadership. It's going to require big vision. It's going to require sacrifice. And it's going to require to really pull the best out of people. And really, you know, most of us don't believe in ourselves. And that's one of the things that I love about being around you, Deb, is that, you know, the fact that you've seen my journey, I could sense that you actually truly believed in me more than I believed in myself. And that is the power that we all have to contribute to somebody else's life. And so leadership is super important when we're coaching people, whether that's in a corporation or in a job or wherever you're at, just remember that your presence and what you say to people really does matter. Like when we used to be told like sticks and stones may break my bones and words would never hurt me. Well, the reality is, is that it does hurt from time to time. So that's a responsibility to let go of things that don't serve us. But hang on to anybody that ever told you that you could be great in your life, because those are the things to hold on to the nuggets. Because if you can't believe in yourself, take on all the examples of people who told you you were amazing and just let that propel you to the next level with your vision. And then think about doing that for other people. Okay. I love you to the moon. You have served in an amazing way today. I know that our listeners are obsessed and they probably think, where has this woman been? So I'd love you to let the listeners know your podcast, where they can find you, because Alex's energy is just the energy that you want in your life. Like she is this way all of the time she's around 
people. And I say that because, again, we all grow through our things, but she's always bringing her best self to the table. And I feel very blessed to do life with you. So where can people find thank, me, Alex? Thank you, my friend. Well, my handle is the same name as my, the same name as my name on Instagram. So it's Alexandra Sove. And my podcast that just got released last October is actually called Inspired for More, because I believe that if you're inspired, you're actually meant to inspire other people for more. And that's exactly what you did for me, Deb. And I'm just so grateful for you. Thanks for inviting me. I love you to the moon. Thank you.